Hi, I'm Shiroi. I'll be going over some tips and some techniques you can start using to help improve your Arthur gameplay. Before beginning the video, I want to mention that this video will not be going over specific matchups against certain mecha, but will generally try to describe relatively how you should respond. I also want to say that Arthur is a very complex mecha with a lot of different techniques, so I won't be going over too many niche techniques. As always, these guides are built based on my own experience, people I have watched or consulted, and information I have gathered through research. Their team. Are they? Before talking about modules, I absolutely have to talk about what you should know first about how Arthur, as a mecha, plays. Arthur is a very psychologically challenging mecha for various reasons for you and your opponent. Arthur's main weapon is his movement and taking advantage of his opponent's weaknesses. Whether it be going under a hurricane or waiting for a mecha to land, you have to know your matchups and what your opponent will do five minutes before they do it. Unfortunately, I cannot go over specific matchups in this video, as that would risk making a lot of information useless due to updates. Eventually, I may go over each matchup in their own unique videos. Arthur has the exceptional ability to disengage from any situation and get away relatively quickly with the right skills. Generally, with Arthur, you want to play a somewhat passive role that can add pressure to your opponents, while also using movement to dodge and making smart advances. As you approach, it may cause your opponent to make a deadly mistake and give you a golden opportunity to finish them off. Being aggressive with Arthur is not impossible, but takes a lot of experience and knowledge about what you're up against so I wouldn't advise shoving your face directly into your enemy upon seeing them, unless you know what you're doing. Nothing is more annoying than getting paralyzed by an Arthur, so use that psychological weapon to your advantage. You don't always have to go in for a kill from a Paralyze, as even hitting multiple beams from your Paralyze is very strong in pressuring your opponent mentally. Later I will talk about Arthur's blade beams and its uses for applying pressure, such as its pixel peak. With all of that said, however, let's talk about the attack module. I believe the best module to use is Frantic Charge. Why? Frantic Charge at max tier gives nearly 14% increased damage to your Whirlwind Charge, at 4.5% increments from green to purple. Lightning Blast can increase your Paralyze duration, however at times it can be negligible. It is, however, more useful in Team Deathmatch primarily due to how impactful making a stationary target is for you and your team. Let's talk about the Defense module. I recommend Versatile Fighter since a 10-20% to damage reduction is largely impactful considering how often you will use your Whirlwind Charge in and out of combat. Whirlwind Charge is a good movement option and combat option, so you'll be getting that bonus quite a lot. Energy Conversion is, in my personal opinion, less impactful. You can get 30 to 90% of your fuel expended back into your shield. However, because it can make you waste fuel out of desperation, as well as the fact that the amount of shield you get is negligible, that is why I can't recommend it very much. That's not to say it's useless, however, as it does have its moments, but it is a lot less likely to save you when you're in a pinch. Overall, while energy conversion is neat to have if you expend all your fuel, versatile fighters should be what you use instead. Let's talk about the Propulsion module. I would highly advise you to avoid using Blade Master and instead use Power Leap. Why? Because as Arthur, movement is your best friend, and with enough practice, you will hit your beams without Blade Master fairly consistently. Power Leap gives you access to a lot of places you may not be able to reach otherwise, while Blade Master can really mess up how you aim. Why would it mess up your aim? because changing the velocity of your weapons causes inconsistency in your play. If you have a purple module one game, but only have a blue or green the next, it will mess up your timing slightly. Let's talk about tech builds. Tech builds for Arthur are rather simple. For attack, you can only go for short range or long range damage bonuses. Fire rate, reload speed, and accuracy techs have no effect on Arthur, so don't bother. In terms of defense tech, you can build towards movement speed, fuel, ability recharge, and or shield. 
It's really up to how you play and what you think will help you. A quick unrelated note, I don't know if I want to keep covering text in these videos as they are all situational and there's not always a definitive best answer. Let me know if you want me to keep covering them or not. I forgot to write the script for Core 1 or Core 2, again, anyways. Core 1 is good if you need a lot of movement. Core 2 is generally more useful in TDM than it is in Battle Royale, just because in TDM you'll want to get more of those blades out. But generally, if you're going to be playing Battle Royale, I'd advise you use Core 1 instead of Core 2. As I've said before, movement is your weapon and your best friend. So having Core 1 helps you accelerate that quite drastically. Let's talk about Arthur's Blade Beam. Arthur's Blade Beam has a few unique things about it. His Blade Beam has one of the best pixel peaks in the game, as well as the fact that upon a successful hit, the opponent will get one stack towards paralysis, which each stack lasts three seconds each. After getting four stacks, you will inflict a paralysis for two seconds without lightning blast. Generally speaking, you'll want to take advantage of his pixel peak the most. Pixel peaking is the most annoying thing in the game, but it's one of Arthur's best friends, so you might as well do it. The best way to hit your blade beams is by understanding when your opponent is either low on fuel, or where they are about to land or dodge, as predicting them correctly is your best option. It's easier to predict where your target will be when they run out of fuel or have expressed any easy pattern. Additionally, Arthur's Blade Beam is good at keeping you in the air, however, when using it this way to attack, try not to use all your Blade Beams while being in the same spot. The reason is because you are basically standing still, so limiting your blades from 1 to an absolute maximum of 3 while fighting will yield the best results for you. I'd recommend trying to keep it to 1 or 2 blades each time, unless you will definitely get a kill from doing more than 3. Let's go over some pilot abilities. One of, if not the best pilot abilities, is Ju Chong's Mantra, as it helps you kill pilots and chip away the health of any mecha during your approach. Additionally, you can use Rom's skill for reduced combat skill cooldown, or Joanna's fuel skill if you aren't managing fuel very well. Red skill may affect the Paralyze, I'm not entirely sure though, because it used to in the past, However, with extensive testing, it didn't seem to work, because if your opponent is on high ping, they get paralyzed after a while based on their ping, which makes the extra time nearly useless. Let's talk about movement. There are various sequences, but with Arthur you can cross over 200 meter gaps if done properly, however it isn't very efficient with speed. With Arthur's dashes in both C1 and Standard, you can jump right as you go down a ramp and gain a massive momentum boost and maintain it with your double jump as you start to descend. It can be life-saving as if you dash down a roof at a Yumi or at the edge of a structure, when you go on a decline you will inherit a lot of momentum after you jump. Try doing it at a Yumi castle and if you do it right, you will notice. Additionally, Arthur's dash can be turned in any direction during the duration of the dash giving you a lot of ways to avoid shots and being less predictable overall. You'll be wanting to use Whirlwind Charge as an attack, escape, and movement option, as the burst of speed it gives you is very important to your mobility. Launch pads and springboards are easy to reduce your speed on. Instead of dashing from a springboard, try to stay in the air using your double jumps, then use a dash at the very end to get the most distance. The reason is because you get more momentum from the springboard than you do with a dash. I will show some examples of movement you can do on screen, however, these can be optimized to be a little better, but they are done to showcase differences in movement. Let's talk about anti-pilot techniques. Generally speaking, Arthur is really bad at killing pilots. An upside to Arthur's blade beam is that it has an easy time slipping through windows and doors, hopefully striking a pilot. If you want to efficiently take down a pilot, throw out one to two blades, use whirlwind charge once, and then repeat. 
Additionally, if you destroy a mecha with your blade beams, if you keep attacking the destroyed mecha before the pilot ejects, you will get a free hit on the pilot consistently without Blade Master. And with all that said, this will be the end of the guide. Now I did want to cover more, but I might have to come back to this Arthur guide in the future and make a second part. As of right now, I just wanted to get that basic information that could help you as a player perform well as Arthur. And later down the line, I plan to make more in-depth videos about Arthur and matchups that he has. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed it, leave a comment on what you think I should cover next, and I do want to mention that I do stream on Twitch now at SMC. so go ahead and give me a follow. You can just stop by, I'll be casting the Pinnacle matches from now on, so if you ever want to watch the Pinnacle, specifically the US and Asia server on PC, I will be casting it over on my Twitch channel, which will be linked in the description. See ya!